What up everybody? Back again here with our negative number unit. Today we're going to be talking about making zero pairs. So let's dive under the water and see what our objective is today. Today I will be able to understand when you add opposites you will find a sum of zero. Our review question says what number is shown on the number line? So here I have a positive four. If I want the opposite of positive four obviously that would be negative four. Why? What did we learn about opposite numbers? Well, they have to be an opposite side to zero, and they have to have the same absolute value, have to be the same distance away from zero. Now, if we look closely at negative four, we know that this negative sign can tell us two things, right? It can tell us to go to the left of zero, right? And it can also tell us that it is the opposite of a positive number. This is true because we've always been starting at zero. We always start at zero and then count four units to the left, right? Because the negative sign is directional. But what if we weren't starting at four? What if we changed that? What would this negative sign mean then? Now, instead of starting at zero this time, we're gonna start at four. So let's move our arrow four units to the right. One, two, three, four. So now we're starting at four instead of zero. We want to move to the left four. In other words, we want to add a negative four. We interrupt your regularly scheduled program to announce in breaking news, subtraction has just died due to natural causes. Subtraction was best known for helping us move left on the number line to find the difference. For example, we could start at eight and then subtract six and move six units to the left and find out the difference between eight and six was in fact two. We could also start at six and move six units to the left by subtracting six and find out that the difference between six and six was zero. This time, however, he moved a little too far left and fell off a cliff, which we consider to be natural causes. Subtraction is survived by his son, add the opposite. Who named that kid? To honor his legacy though, anytime we see a subtraction sign, we'll follow the rule of rewriting to add the opposite. Let me show you an example. Instead of saying eight minus six, we can say eight plus negative six, changing the subtraction sign to an addition sign, and then adding the opposite of the number we want to subtract. As you can see, if you start at eight, and you add a negative six, your negative sign will tell you to move to the left six paces, one, two, three, four, five, six, and you will still come up with the same answer. If you have six minus six, instead of saying that now, in honor of subtraction, we will say we are going to add the opposite. So instead of subtracting, we'll be adding negative six, and if you start at six, and you add a negative six to that, that means you're gonna be moving left six places, and you will still come up with the same answer. As you can see, it's still gonna give you the same answer, but it will make you look way smarter. Now, back to your regularly scheduled program. Well, that was exciting. So, we are gonna start at four, and then we want to move to the left four units. Now, before subtraction died, we would say four minus four. Okay, but we're not gonna do that anymore. Subtraction has now died. We are gonna be adding the opposite. So we're gonna say four plus negative four because the opposite of positive four is negative four. And that's gonna tell us to move four units to the left because the negative sign is directional. So if I move four units to the left, one, two, three, four, I'm going to end up at zero. Let's try again, starting with six. So if I start at six, okay, here we go. I'll just use my pen this time. And I want to move six units to the left. Again, no longer can I say subtract six, but I'm going to add the opposite instead because that's gonna give me the same answer. I wanna move left six units. So if I move one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm going to end up at zero. If you notice a pattern here by adding the opposite, you get zero. That's going to lead us to our rule for today. Our key thought or our rule for today. Any number in its additive inverse have a sum of zero. In other words, they are a zero pair. Now, additive inverse is just a fancy way 
of saying you are adding the opposite, okay? And so here we're going to show with variables. If I have a number and I add the opposite of that, that's going to be 0. And here are a few more examples. If I have positive 4 and I add the opposite, that's going to be 0. If I start out at negative 5 and I add the opposite of negative 5, which would be positive 5, I'm going to end up at 0. And if I start at a negative 8 and I add the inverse of that, inverse is just another way of saying opposite, I'm going to end up at 0. So negative 8 and 8 are a 0 pair. Negative 5 and 5 are a 0 pair. And positive 4 and negative 4 are also a 0 pair. Any number, when you add it to its opposite or its additive inverse, is going to give you a sum of 0. Some of you have a great question. Why is that? Well, it all has to do with absolute value. So let's take a look at the I do problem to better understand this. All right, so it says find the sum of these numbers and then prove it on a number line. Well, I know subtraction is dead for this first one, so I can't do 15 minus 15. I have to, do, I have to add its inverse. So I'm going to say 15 plus negative 15, okay? So if I start at positive 15, and then I want to move left 15 because that's what negative 15 is telling me, I'm going to end up at 0. Why? Because they have the same absolute value. 15 and negative 15 are both 15 away from 0. No matter where you start, if you add the opposite of that number, well, to be an opposite, you have to have the same absolute value. So you're going to be moving the same amount of spaces that you are away from 0, back to 0, which means you're always going to end up at 0, right? So if I start at 15, and then I move left 15, or add a negative 15, I'm going to end up back at 0. Why? Because 15 and negative 15 have the same absolute value. So here I have negative 9, and I'm adding the opposite of that. Right? Now, I don't have to rewrite addition because subtraction is the one that's dead. Addition is still alive and well. Right? We want to write everything as addition now. So if I start at negative 9, my absolute value is 9. Right? I'm 9 units away from 0. Well, if I add a 9 or directionally move to the right on the number line, I'm going to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 back to 0 right? So again, the reason this works is because a number and its additive inverse have the same absolute value. And then if I have 12, so here's 10, 11, 12, and then I want to add a negative, that means I'm going to be going to the left, right? Because the negatives tell me I'm going to the left on my number line. I'm going to be moving back 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? So here's my negative 12, and I'm going to end up back at 0, so the sum of all of these is zero because they're all zero pairs. Understanding this is going to really help you when you get to a little bit higher level of adding and subtracting negative numbers, but understanding why is the most important. Again, it's because they have the same absolute value. Let's take a look at this we do problem. So it says this morning it is 15 degrees below zero. How many degrees does it need to warm up to reach zero degrees this afternoon? So I'm going to write a statement. It's going to say it needs to warm up blank degrees. So I'm looking for anything about degrees. It says it's 14 degrees below zero. That means it's at negative 14, okay? And you want to know, okay, how many degrees do I need to go up my number line to reach zero? If I'm looking at a number line here, okay, I'll put zero here. If I'm at negative 14, what number do I need to add to that to get back to zero? Well, I want to go up the number line, which means I'm going to be adding a positive number. And again, I want a zero pair because I want to get back to zero. So the opposite of negative 14 is positive 14 because they have the same absolute value and they're on opposite sides of zero. So if I take negative 14 and its additive inverse of positive 14, that's going to give me zero. These are a zero pair. So it needs to warm up 14 degrees. Because it's such a foundational skill for adding and subtracting numbers and not just being able to take shortcuts but understanding what's happening, we're going to do another we do problem instead of a you try problem. And our we do problem says, if I climb up 12 feet above sea level, how far do I have to go back down to reach sea level? So my statement's going to say, 
I have to go back down blank feet. So I know I was 12 feet above sea level. So if I do a number line just to kind of show what's happening here. Okay, there we go. Could be an ugly number line. That's okay. Here's zero and here is positive 12 because I was above sea level. I want to know how far do I have to go back down to reach sea level? In other words, if you're starting at 12, what would you have to add to this to reach sea level? And again, zero is being represented by the sea level here. All right, so I want to add, because I know subtraction is dead, but I want to go down the number line 12 units. So if I start at 12, I need to add the inverse of negative 12. And again, I put negative 12 in parentheses here just to separate the two signs, otherwise it'd be kind of confusing. If I start at 12 and then I add a negative 12, that's going to give me a zero. So your mathematical answer is negative 12. But the down right here is your negative sign, okay? So I have to go back down or negative 12 feet. You wouldn't say down negative 12 feet because that would be an opposite of opposite, all right? You have to go back down. The down is the negative sign, so your answer is 12 feet. Again, not showing this with subtraction, but showing it with addition. If you want to move left or down on your number line, we're no longer subtracting. We're adding the inverse or adding the opposite of what you're starting with, which leads us to what we want you to take with you. Number one, subtraction is dead. Okay, it died. We're no longer writing things with subtraction. It's always going to be adding the opposite or adding the inverse of that. And that's shown by this mathematical formula. If you have A, whatever A is, it could be 5, it could be 6, it could be 7, and then you add the opposite of that, that's going to make a zero pair, which means the sum is zero. As always, thank you so much for taking your time to spend with Instructor Beats today. We'd love to know where you're watching from, so leave a comment, like the video. We'd love for you to join our Instructor Beats family by subscribing. Thank you so much. Check out our negative number song and the rest of our negative number playlist. Again, thank you. Instructor Beats, out.